colonies develop from small to large and change. They go through different stages of development. Again, this was something that, um, that William Morton Wheeler looked at. Many social insects go from a solitary to a social state. So you can look at that as developing from something more primitive into something that's more social. Again, walking through stages of, of phylogenetic evolution. This particular case, this is a fire ant queen. Fire ant queens found nests on their own. At least the, salt, the, the single queen populations do. They found their own nest. They raise the first batch of, of brood. They lay the eggs and then they raise those first batch of workers, which tend to be very, very tiny. And that's the very beginning of this colony. So it's gone from, from a single individual now to a small social group. Then over time, these individual tiny workers they do enough work that they start building this colony. It grows, it gets bigger and bigger, and it can build into something like this with a large number of individuals. Uh, there's, there's specialization of individuals within this group. So you have kind of the differential functions of parts. Uh, and also you'll have different sized individuals representing different kinds of casts and tasks. Looking at honeybee development, you can think about it in the same way. Again, this is be in the context of how, how uh, William Morton Wheeler may have thought about this. So here you have the, a swarm, and it's an embryo. It's just, it's, it, ha it hasn't yet developed. It's, it's, a, it's a raw um, embryonic form of a colony. It, it has the workers, which are you know, like our body cells or whatever, and has a queen. Then it goes through a developmental process that eventually, it becomes a full, a full-fledged colony with a full-fledged nest. It grew a body. It becomes an adult. Again, this is kind of a developmental process going from, from small and undifferentiated to large and differentiated. Some species of social insects go through different levels of sociality as the, the colony develops. This is a case of Lazioglossum which species, which is, which is a, um, uh, a sweat bee. And females um, will form a nest on their own. They, they're solitary. They will raise their first batch of, of offspring on their own. Uh, but then sometimes the daughters uh, will, some of the daughters may remain in the nest and help the mother. So this is sort of a very rud a rudimentary uh, form of, of, uh, of a society. It's the beginnings of so sociality in this group. So sometimes the daughter remains, sometimes they don't, sometimes they just leave. Uh, sometimes the, 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 male, the female dies before the daughters emerge. And, and so there, all these things can happen. Then the daughters, sometimes overlap with their mothers. The mother didn't die, they emerge, they overlap with their mother, and then they will, sometimes they will stay and they will raise sisters. So they become workers. And so they stay and they work and they raise sisters and they're working for their mother. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes the, the, the whole life of this, this nest is single queen, she made, she, or single female, she made daughters and they left. And then sometimes, the daughters um, will not reproduce themselves. They will help their mother and they will raise sisters and they won't lay eggs themselves. So now they've become highly social. So one could look at this as different steps in the evolution of highly social um, insects or highly social ground nesting bees in this case, that this could be a, 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 an evolutionary process. They, in the beginning, they they nested alone, and then at some point in time, they got daughters remaining in the nest and overlapping generations with their mothers. And then sometimes they stayed and they raised their sisters and gave up their own reproduction. So that could be looked at as a progressive um, process and evolution evolving from, from being solitary to being highly social. Uh, 
it appears that that's not true. It appears that this or not, I mean, because you'll find all of these individual stages uh, being terminal stages in uh, different colonies of the this particular species. But it appears that there's some sort of a, a progression, a, a nest that becomes highly social went through this progression as if they were playing out the phylogeny of the evolution of the high, highly social trait. Another theory that greatly influenced uh, William Morton Wheeler and becomes important in thinking about the social insects as, um, as superorganisms is the germplasm theory of August Weismann, another, another German um, developmental biologist. Uh, Weismann proposed that, uh, that the germ line uh, of, during development gets sequestered early on and separated from the soma. Now, the soma are the other tissues in your body other than your germ tissue. The germ line are, is, are the tissues that, that give rise to the sperm produced by males and the eggs produced by females. So the, the germ line is sequestered early in development. And that's a fact, it's true. When, when you have the, the formation of a zygote, when a sperm and an egg fuse and form a zygote, it go, starts going through a series of divisions. It starts off as one, becomes two, becomes four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, so it gets bigger. At some point in there, the different clusters of cells that are in this mass that's developing become dedicated to building different kinds of tissues. And so one of those is a group clusters of cells that become dedicated to, de to developing the, the um, sperm and eggs. Those get separated away. They get sequestered and they don't go into subsequent further differentiation that you see with the other cells that become the soma, the body cells, the ones that make the liver, the heart, the brain, the skin. They're different. They go through many, many divisions. They become specialized. Um, and even within the cells themselves, the chromosomes will duplicate and, 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 and uh, increase in, in numbers in certain cells in order to specialize in making certain kinds of gene products. So that becomes something that's kind of contaminated. It's not, it's not the, pure, the pure genome or genotype to be passed on uh, subsequently. So the germ, the germplasm gets separated out early in development and protected. And then it's only used for, for making sperm and eggs. And then those get passed to the next generation, which there again, there's a sequestration process that protects it. And so it, it continues to be protected and, and maintains its integrity. When you look at the honeybee, you can see evidence, certainly for the sequestering of the germline, as takes place in humans. You know, when, when you know, early in our development, the, the tissues that make the sperm cells got protected and, and only certain um, uh, primary spermatocytes actually produce the sperm. And the same with primary oocytes producing eggs in the, in the females. Well, it gets sequestered away also in a, in a social sense in that um, uh, when you look at a queen's beha mating behavior, she will go out and mate with maybe 20 males, each producing five, roughly five or six million sperm. Uh, so she'll take in 100 million sperm, but she'll only save, store about 5 million of those sperm in her spermatheca to last her whole egg laying life. So here's a male. He's been ejaculated. And right here, this is the sperm. This is the, this is the germ line that's been sequestered in his testes. And here's the sperm, and it's going to get passed to the next generation. So it gets passed in into the queen that he, he, he copulates with her. And they're deposited in the oviducts. The sperm then comes back and ends up in the spermatheca, where it's then sequestered. So it's gone from him to the, to the spermatheca, and it's sequestered in the spermatheca and protected. In 
many social insects, the, the social hymenoptera for sure, the, um, the female, the queen in this case, becomes the, the stores, the germline for both the male and the female. In this case, the paired oviducts, those are the ovaries. Inside these ovaries, there are tubules um, that have, at the, at the tips of them, they have primary oocytes, the cells that were sequestered early in development, the very, very early on in the, in the process of, of developing the embryo, they were sequestered away and they provide the eggs that, that, that are then subsequently fertilized and, and, uh, and become an individual. Uh, so, and the, she also stores the sperm. So she basically provides the role. She sequesters both the female and the male germ um, and sequesters it away and then uses it uh, to produce workers and drones and queens.